very good morning students today we have mr venkatraman from garware walropes limited who will talk to us on the landfill engineering and by way of introduction he is uh, currently the vice president of the international geosynthetic society india chapter he has uh, more than 40 years of experience in both civil engineering and uh, geosynthetics and he has uh, pioneered uh, very innovative applications of geosynthetics in india and uh, let us listen uh, from him on the topic of the landfill engineering uh, landfill engineering systems non engineered waste dumps once they are put in an unprotected manner they result due to the precipitation a leachate is created and the leachate goes down and pollutes the ground water then the gas fire hazards all these things are there becomes and it's also create some dust pollution and it litters the odor everything is created so this is how the unprotected waste is created landfill engineering system an engineered landfill is a controlled method of waste disposal the objective is the landfill is to contain waste in a manner that is protective to human health and the environment landfills performed by controlling and managing the movement of fluids landfills are engineered facilities for the disposal of municipal solid waste as well as hazardous waste uh now we will look into that how before we go into the actual landfill engineering how the assessment of your site selection all these processes are being done based on the site topography and capacity requirement the landfill can be classified as above the ground ground landfill below or above and below which is a combination of both some places the area available is only in the slope adjoining a slope so a slope landfill is done and a valley landfill where you have got hillocks and there is a valley in between then the landfill is accommodated in the valley so that is called a valley landfill some of these examples are shown in the pictures below now the above the gra ground landfill area of the landfill you see it below in the picture is a above landfill and this is an example of below and above you see there both the thing that is below the ground fill as well as above the ground fill and now combination of two previous method of landfill the excavation area is much larger in the trench and the depth of excavation normally depends on the depth of the ground water table that's the most critical thing in this selection the valley landfill you see here the valley portion and this is where the landfill is accommodated and this is the slope if the landfill is disposed the waste is disposed adjoining the slope it is called slope landfill but you have to take into consideration the characteristics of the landfill whether it will be able to retain and that particular slope formation other thing is the engineering challenge criteria then site selection local criteria that is list of potential sites we take a lot of list of potential sites selection of the few best sites and we have to make a environmental impact assessment of the sites and finally narrow down to the one single site and based on this selection we have to do a thorough site investigation a subsoil investigation ground water hydrological investigation topographical investigation geological and seismic investigation and environmental investigation all these are must before we make this final site as the most suitable thing for a landfill then the planning and design of the landfill essential components of design life it depends on the waste characteristics as well as the storage capacity based on that the design life of the landfill is decided waste volume waste compatibility and landfill landfill layout and section phase operation in sometimes we will have the whole area selected identified 
but the landfill will be created in phases phase 1 phase 2 like that. So, that is it is identified as a total, but creation is done in phases that is the disposal of waste is done in phases part 1 part 2 like that. That the estimation of leachate quantities is very important leachate is that which is created any waste you dump in a landfill area due to rain water and the creation of moisture within the system the water percolates down and that leachate has to be collected. If this leachate is allowed to go and mix with the ground water then the pollution takes place that is a leachate quantity. So, if you know the leachate quantity only then the drainage and the collection of the leachate system can be prepared. So, that is a very important and liner system. Liner system depends on the waste material, but mostly these are prepared in India at the moment by central pollution control board regulations. Manuals are there, the guidelines are there, they clearly specify how the disposal of uh, waste has to be done depending on the nature, what are the conditions, what are the design methodology, what is do's and do not everything has been specified by CPCB guidelines. And liner system, leachate, drainage, collection and removal. Now, planning and design, leachate management as I said you know the quantity, you know how. You collect the leachate and not only you collect it, then you have to treat it before you dispose it off, that is important. So, in some cases there could be a gas generation, this gas has to be collected, it has to be let on, uh, I mean it has to be disposed in a proper way by either by flaring or using it for productive purpose like power generation other things. So, that is a gas management final cover system, you create a landfill, it is uh, used for dumping the material, but after all the usage once it is full you have to close it that is the capping system, that is a cover system, that is also has to be done. And surface water, once you create the capping, you have to ensure there is a surface water drainage system, base stability, soap stability, seismic aspects and the site infrastructure, that is during the operation as well as after closure. Environmental monitoring system, landfill is supposed to be there for 30 years, 40 years, since the time it is created. So, it has to be monitored closely whether it is functioning the way we wanted it to function without polluting the environment that has to be very clearly checked and that is the monitoring system. Now, construction of landfill, landfill site construction and development, site procedures, record keeping, waste inspection phase development, phase operation, pollution prevention, phase closure, landfill closure, post closure vegetation stabilization, every one is important. Inspection and monitoring and record creeping criteria, during the construction of liners and covers, during the operation, during the closure period and post closure period, environmental monitoring system and post closure criteria. All these things what I am referring are the points which has been very clearly identified in CPCB guidelines and manuals. Now, typically you look at the landfill, this is a typical landfill layout where you create there is a periphery which could be a earth wall, sometimes we also create a boundary wall for the landfill by using the waste material itself later on we will see some of these examples how, then there is a disposal and the methodology of placement of waste, the solid waste in a each section and for that also the ramp has been provided here. For example, you can see the ramp here to take the trucks inside, it takes it down inside and there are laid out methodology so that in each area the dumping is done. Major components of landfill, the most important is the bottom and side liner system. Initially, the US environmental pollution control also recommended as the clay, the mineral layer as the most, but later on they found when you dispose the waste material, some of the chemicals in these waste react with the clay and then it lay 
to a situation when there is a desiccation of the clay layer. So, they said the clay alone will not be sufficient even if you use a mineral layer an HTP liner which is a inert material to most of the waste toxic substances is the ideal one. So, that is a combination. So, bottom and side the liner which is the HTP membrane is used. In some cases we will see how even the clay layer can be replaced and what advantage we will see it later. Then there is a leachate collection and removal system, leak detection system. Now, when you create a landfill it is a one single operation you create a landfill, but if you make a mistake during the creation of landfill there is no solution to that. So, before you dispose your waste material into a landfill having created it you have to ensure the, the landfill which you have created is very secure. For that you have got a leak detection system. There are various ways of doing the leak detection that we will see they improved. There are methods which are grid laying methods which can continuously monitor during the operation of the landfill to say whether a leak is occurring or not. So, those methodologies are there then gas collection remover then top liner system. The top liner system will come into operation once the landfill is filled and storm water drainage because surrounding area the rain water. So, storm water environmental monitoring system and the other infrastructure. Bottom and side liner system single most important element of a landfill. This is placed as the bottom and sides of the landfill to prevent mitigation of leachate to surrounding soil and water that is the purpose. Liner consists of multiple barrier and drainage layer that we will see in the subsequent sketches. Many consists of a compacted clay liner or the mineral layer as I said then a geo membrane then a geosynthetic clay liner. Sometimes we use a geosynthetic clay liner which is called a GCL. Geotextiles are a combination of these. In the leachate collection again to collect the leachate to prevent the built up of leachate and to drain the leachate if at all present in the secondary liner system. Gas collection this is more particularly in the municipal solid waste. Generate large quantity of uh, gas during the decomposition two primary methane and carbon dioxide are cre possibly created. The system is to collect and extract the gas from within the landfill. And the landfill gas can either be used to produce energy as I already mentioned or flat under controlled condition. Top liner system I have told it already. consists of a barrier and drainage layer. Again it has contains a barrier, it is almost a mirror image of the bottom liner. Again it consists of a barrier and the drainage layer. Main purpose is to minimize water infiltration from the top, once the system is closed from the top into that. And soil layer is included at the top to protect the underlying layers against the intrusion of water damage to enhance the surface drainage system. Now, single composite liner system, there are two methods, one is a single layer system, other is a double layer system. In a single layer system, we start with a compact clay liner existing separate over that the compact clay liner. As I said, clay is originally it was only clay, then we found because of the desiccation of the clay material, the membrane was used. So, that is the HTP geo membrane, over that a non one geotextile. The non oven geotextiles has got two purpose, one it is a drainage material, in landfills it is also used as a cushioning material to cushion because over that membrane and this non oven textile there could be other drainage carry materials which could be aggregate sand and other thing gravels. These materials should not puncture the membrane. In fact, it is said the geotextile in a liner system should last for one day more than the basic liner. That is it is to protect if it is 100 years is the life of the HTP liner it should lock 100 years plus one year 
is the textile that is a requirement in a simple way to say. So, that is a very important component a non woven textile then the leachate collection system you have got with the pipes which is basically a perforated pipe surrounded by a textile we will see that and then the drainage layer and then the waste material the double layer system the double layer system most of the components repeat it in two times because in liner system what is that we do not want the waste material or the leachate to go and pollute the ground water or the environment. So, we always say thicker the better the more cushion then it is more the better. So, that is the way if you look at it first as I have seen the compacted clay liner membrane non woven textile the leachate collection system then compacted clay liner it repeats itself then HCP membrane non oven textile again leachate collection system drainage layer and then the waste it is doubly there. So, double liner system and the double liner system is mostly used in the case of hazardous waste material which are toxic substances which are different from non hazardous solid waste like a municipal waste. Top liner system once a landfill is filled suppose it is meant for 25 years service it is after 25 years the landfill is full then we go for the top liner system. So, here we start with the waste material which is already there and over that comes the compacted clay liner which is a normal clay membrane non oven textile drainage layer and surface vegetation layer. Here we put the normal soil and create a vegetation and if you see a landfill once the closure is done as per the with the using the top liner system it is a environmentally friendly area it is like a park. Now, the geosynthetic products we talked about most of the time about uh, geo membrane GCL liners other thing. So, what are the geosynthetic material generally involved if you look at it a GCL geosynthetic clay liner. The importance of geosynthetic clay liner is sometimes you can replace even the ordinary clay the mineral or compacted clay liner by a synthetic clay liner. A synthetic clay liner is made of three components it is consists of a woven textile a bentonite layer and a non woven textile all the three are needle punched together to create a clay liner which is equivalent to a normal clay liner and it is better than a normal clay liner. How? If you say a normal clay liner the permeability aspect is around 10 to the power of minus 7 to 10 to the power of minus 9, but in the case of a GCL it is of the order of 10 to the power of minus 11 that is almost 100 times it is more impermeable than the normal compacted clay liner and then you create a clay liner normal clay liner you have to go from 30 to 1 meter or 1.5 meter that is the thickness, but here a 9 to 10 mm is equivalent to about more than half a meter of clay and the most important point of the GCL liners are even if they are punctured during the construction or uh, installation process within 24 hours it has got the ability to mend the holes it will automatically mend the holes. So, that is the very important and the whole geosynthetic usage in this thing is one of economy apart from technical aspect how because you create a landfill by spending so much of money, but when you use the geosynthetic material which are thin planar elements two dimensional element compared to the third dimension which is very thin you create so much of extra space for storage of waste material. So, in the same area by using geosynthetic compared to a drainage layer you use a sand gravel and other thing instead of that you use a non oven textile or a geonet. If you use a compacted clay layer instead of that you use a GCL you use a membrane then you know the extra space created itself will make a economic sense in that creation of the landfill. So, that is the most important use of the geosynthetics material in a landfill apart from 
the technical aspects. Then GCL, HTP membrane we have seen generally the HTP membrane used in the municipal solid waste and the azotous waste is around 1.5 mm thickness as per the guideline. We do not use anything less than that. Abroad they go even to the extent of 2 mm, but in India we restrict it to minimum 1.5 mm. Non urban textile, it depends on the waste height and the characteristics of the waste so that that much load is coming. So, it has to provide a cushion. And in the non urban textile, it is normally a needle punched textile is better because so many non urban textiles is, but a needle punch textile gives you a better cushion. Then geonet, geonet is nothing, it is a spacer bar used between two textiles. So, it gives a space for a flow of water in the horizontal. Geogrid, geogrid can be used either in a soil veneer reinforcement. When you place a geosynthetic material, membrane other thing on a slope, see the subgrade material of the slope, the membrane, the textile all these things has got a interfacial friction between one another. Depending on the slope geometry, if they reach a point, they may slip between one another. So, to prevent that in a soil veneer methodology, the geogrids are used to take the tension, create a tension so that the slipping is prevented, that is one way. Then the other way of using the geogrid is the side embankment above the landfill when you are doing the side embankments can be created using the geogrid as a reinforced earth. That means, for a same height you can use a very inferior material as the fill material. You can create a steeper slope. So, all these things are possible with a geogrid. Then the woven textile, woven textile is used in the final cover layer. Geomat, geomat is the material which is used for erosion control on the outer periphery of the boundary wall and geopipe, geopipe is used in leachate collection. As I said, the compacted clay liner is a replacement to the conventional material. Drainage layer, sand aggregate, this is replaced by geonet geocomposite drain. So, that is again space consideration. Advantages creates extra landfill capacity by replacing conventional clay and geosynthetic reinforced embankment can reduce the base width of the embankment which results in substantial savings in earthwork for high rise embankment. Now, insulation, you have selected the site you have arrived at the critical criteria of the material, what are to be used, but how you go about insulation? The insulation is the most critical aspect of a thing, because as I said earlier, if you create a landfill, if there is a mistake, you do not get a second chance to rectify it once the waste come into the system. So, you have to create it first time the right. So, for joining membrane, hot wedge welding is used and extrusion welding is also used in some cases and non destructive testing. Once a joint is made, the strength of the joint is checked by non destructive testing and destructive testing. Their methodologies are there. There are protocols are there. Every morning the machines have to be set right. The welding has to be done during the period when the sun is not, when the daytime is not very hot. That is early morning or late in the night. Only the insulations can be done with the membrane that is the ideal time, because the HTP membrane with the rise in temperature will expand and night it will contract. So, you have to do this insulation at a time when the temperature variation is not much, that is either in temperate climate like India and other places, you have to do it either in the early morning or in the late in the evening and night, not during the hot noon time. Then after insulation, there is a final thing is a leak detection methodology. Because during the construction, there is possible you must have done something which created a hole. To check it, there is a grid 
there is a electrical conductivity the whole area is filled with water then you, you move the anode and cathode kind of a thing there there is a potential difference you know there is a hole and the hole is rectified by creating a extrusion welding joint and geomembrane you see how they do it and what you see here is a machine hot wedge welding machine which automatically moves I will show you a better arrangement this is how the machineries are used these are used to test the seams that are created during the process. Now, if you look at the top here, these are the two well joints which are created during the HTP during the wedge and here an annular hole is created. In this hole an air is passed after the seaming is done an air is passed and it is by ASTM method it is tested using a gauge pressure gauge it is inserted into that air is pumped in and there is ASTM says so many minutes the pressure should be maintained constant. Then if it is done then there is no leak. If it is a leak then you have to the total length is 10 meter. You split in the middle and do repeat the test. You know either it in this 5 meter or in this 5 meter the leak is there. You go on by trial and error method till you locate the leak and once you locate the leak you have to do it an extrusion welding. Extrusion welding is like similar to your arc welding in the conventional welding. You have got a HTP rod, use that HTP rod, do it and after doing that welding, you have to do a vacuum box test. Put the soap bubble there, apply the vacuum and see if the bubbles are coming. If the bubbles are coming, air leak is there. If it is not there, the joint is perfect. These are destructive. Every morning before you start the welding, two pieces of membranes are welded as per specification put in here and tested as per the standard for peel and other test. Now, clay liner, clay liner is much simpler the, the product comes with a marking at the edge you have to use a bentonite paste at that about 300 mm is the overlap you place one geosynthetic clay liner over the other at the 300 mm overlap and just have a small hand roller and roll it that is all the insulation is very simple and this is the textile textile is done two method either the seaming is done the overlap criteria is given 150 mm or 300 mm depending on that either a seaming is done or some hot air is used to join the geotextile you see you have to use a ladder also to do the welding at the slope portion and now overlap plastic flanges how it is done this is for the geonet geonet is a cable tie we just use it as a hollow material and do it and these are pipes sometimes you may be using a bringing a slurry zero-size slurry into that then those pipes have to be joined together so that is done by a mirror joint and joining of pipe each one is a specific methodology is there and once a landfill is completed you have to monitor it. You create some boreholes in the adjoining areas. In the adjoining areas, you create a borehole. You start before the start of the landfill, you take the water quality and test it. And after that, you take the water and periodically test it to so see the quality improves and not deteriorates further. Then you know the landfill is functioning properly. But while I am talking about this, I am also constrained to say there are some opinions in the international field no landfill is free from holes. Please understand, even all the precaution, there could be still some holes will could be there in the landfill, but that does not affect the performance. In spite of that, they give you the very best performance. Now, I am going to explain to you some case studies which have been created. I had the privilege or the experience of being associated with more than 100 landfills in the last 10 years. Some of them I am going to which are critical and which are most useful and which are quite different from the routine run of the mill, those case studies we will explain. They include the municipal solid waste, hazardous waste and landfill capping. So, we cover the entire gambit of applications. Now, 
this is a Jaipur municipal solid waste site. This is just we started with the clay liner insulation site. This is a site is prepared, you know, by removing the obstructions, other thing, leveling the ground, everything. Now, after that, the geomembrane insulation is progress. Generally, depending on the larger the width of the membrane, it is more better because then you have the least number of joints. In some cases and most of the cases in India, we have used 9.4 meter width membrane, but it is it has got its own associated problem. To take a 9.4 meter width membrane and to install it, it requires some capacity to handle it. It is it's not as simple as handling a 5 meter or 8 meter. So, every opportunity has got some problem also. Then you have got the drainage and leachate collection system. The pipe is laid in a pattern, in a particular pattern and here the gradation of the landfill bottom is also taken into that, because the flow is almost taken by gravity in the leachate. Then the site geonet, at the side slope you use a geonet that is a drainage composite system which is a geonet is a spacer bar kind of material with a textile, so that the liquid gets collected and flows through that. Now, we will see another landfill example PCMC Pune. Here the preparation base, you have seen the base preparation, then liner insulation, it is almost the liner insulation is complete, the entire area is covered with the membrane and then indoor another municipal solid waste, here you see the base as well as the sides are covered with membrane and over that Rampur, this is a cane energy Bamir, which is for oil waste at Bamir for cane energy. Now, hazardous waste landfill. Hazardous landfill as I said is a double layer system and here we are going to see uh, first something and I will explain to you in detail. We had a landfill which is created in Udaipur about uh, uh, 12 years back. The landfill has come the capacity created has been justified and it has almost to the brim, but they wanted to create additional capacity. There was no site available, no space available. This is where geosynthetic was used to its most advantage. The area was 18 hectares, the existing embankment height was 3 to 11 meter, the length of the embankment 1.5 kilometer or 1500 meters. The issues are limited base width to create permanent stable slope for higher embankment. If I use the same embankment higher, then a huge earthwork quantity. The solution is geotextile reinforced embankment. The final embankment was 6 to 14 meters from we said 11, from that it went to 6 to 14 meters. Now, you will see here in detail how it has been created. This is the existing embankment you can see here at the bottom, this is the boundary of the existing embankment and over that from the outside, because inside is filled with material, correct, waste material. So, outside a wraparound ge geotextile reinforced earth has been, technology has been created and this is how it has been done and then this is the height which has been created over the existing embankment. And then this liner which was originally installed here has been removed, fresh liner has been put, these two are joined and this much of extra height has been created for a storage. This is the beginning of that, you see the existing embankment on the outside, we are using the material to create the new embankment. The embankment construction is in process, this is almost ready 14 meter high, the maximum height was created and then this is the interior. You see the invis the hazardous waste thing inside there are some infiltration 
wells are being created for the drainage purpose. Now, you see so one such well, it is because the waste is full up to the height, there is no space and you cannot reach this place. Now, I have to create an extra height for the we have gone up to 14 meter. So, for that we created a temporary rope suspended bridge and we fab free fabricated a gallery and this is what you will see is a embankment this is a well in the center. We created and we free fabricated it and took it and fixed it on the top and the same side. Now, in this something Vizag the first landfill was created for hazardous waste which is called zero site in the year 2000 it was completed. Uh, there is the initial here the embankment was prepared by using a reinforced earth technology using a geogrid. Now, you will see here the base preparation is a clay liner insulation then this I am talking about the second pond first pond we completed it was full then we created the second pond to accommodate the extra material which are coming and then you see here pond 2 was completed and you will see here both pond 1 and pond 2 created simultaneously. This is the pond 1, this is the pond 1 correct and this is almost full. Now, we went and created this pond 2 that is this is a common wall the three sides we used the additional material by reinforced earth. In this we use a geogrid, in this also we use a geogrid, but the embankment was created using the gerocyte waste itself which has got a PHA value of 14 degrees. Using a 14 degree frictional value material by using the reinforced earth we created an embankment of 8 meter height almost a slope of 1 in 1. So, what is the benefit here? Here the benefit was you have not brought extra good material from outside whatever it is available you have used it. So, that is the efficacy that is the cost economics that is the technology. Now, is the cane energy you see that I will show you now the capping. See it takes a lot of time to do the capping because first you have to create a landfill and the landfill may be you know 10 years 12 years it has to be in operation once it is full only you go for capping. So, not many capping situations have happened in India there are a, only few things have happened and uh, we will discuss one such thing. This is at Hindustan Singh Vizag I said in the year 2000 we created the first landfill for zero site waste. The area is 52,000 square meter the height is 78 meter embankment height one in one slope it was reinforced earth embankment volume was around 4 lakh cubic meter and the property is 17 kilo newton and cohesion value is 4 kPa. Now, we will see a closer look of the filter closer this is a closure. Now, this is contains some moisture also. So, this layer what you see at the top is very soft zero site. So, if you go for construction it will start sinking automatically. So, some cases we may have to do a bearing capacity improvement before you start doing that. What we did was a special method we use a high strength textile because this is how see we moved the initial equipment it was all sinking you can see in the top corner that the equipment we cannot reach it. So, what we did was we used a high strength textile about 80 kilo newton provided the initial access for construction and materials other thing and support load and then soil cover and top liner system. Now, type and load of equipment height everything has been assessed and calculated accordingly the selections have been made. This is the geometry and layout of what we used geometry for the closure. Here we use something called these are the sectional drawings which you can see these humps and valleys I have got a load because if you know the geo textile or a geo grid is a strain controlled material only when it is stretched 
its strength is mobilized. So, what we did was we created a hump kind of thing or fingernail movements, so that it is stretched and the strength is mobilized before we could place the final materials. So, this is a movement you can see here very clearly the movement this is the path direction of the movement and these are the places where it got filled after laying the textile and that created the sufficient tension then this intervening portions are filled with materials. This is how you can see this one portion other portion in between there is nothing. So, here it takes a tension happens here correct in both side load and by this process the whole thing was completed and here the system is I am not going in detail, but I have shown you a top liner system is a replica of the bottom line single liner system. It has got a clay, lay, clay material, then a liner, then you have got a drainage material other thing. Finally, you have got a top soil with the vegetation growth that is the erosion control mechanism and that is what you can see the vegetation happening here and this is one of the major capping insulation for hazardous waste done in India and IIT were the proof consultants for this project IIT Madras and we are grateful to IIT Madras also because it is a mutual learning for both of us in that. Now, the way the technology is going I just want to say only one more minute and tell you. Today the carbon credit other things are there. The way the technology is going is such that apart from this we have to create more money more value. One of the system is in Georgia they have done a model study. In the top liner system they have used what is called photovoltaic textiles. These geotextiles have got copper wires embedded into that. A, these are used on the slope in the final layer, though the sun rays fall on that then electricity is generated. Then they have got the special equipment to draw that sunlight to convert it into like you know the photo cell. Similarly, a textile embedded with the copper wire the technology is there they create electricity and then it is used because most of these closed landfill if you take hazard as this it must be inside a factory area or other thing. So, it is well protected there is no vandalism or other thing and the space is idle that is land space is not used for any other purpose, but if you can use it for producing electricity then that is the best thing that can happen you can get the carbon credit other thing. So, if you look at it the geosynthetic in landfill it is not only solves the today's existing problem it provides and has ample scope for future in create more value also. And the references here is I have given the most important is the criteria for hazardous landfill CPCB guidelines each one of you should be going through that if you want to learn about it. It is a complete document which is used and the landfill is one sector where there is no confusion in geosynthetic because the guidelines other things are very well laid out. So, it has to be implemented that way only there is no issue on that and there are other references manual for design and construction and quality control again by CPCB publication and later on a municipal solid waste publication also has come and then corners book which is most important. Now, I thank you very much for your patient hearing. It is a pleasure to share the experience and to give you a brief bird's eye view of the entire landfill gambit. Thank you very much. Now, this uh, PPP has come into all these highway projects. Is there any PPP model for landfills uh, in India? Sir, the PPP model is there, but it is there only for uh, uh, municipal corporations, like uh, we have got in Hyderabad and in Cochin and uh, Cochin there is a industrial which has been created, but it depends on if the user industries which are all the industries which are in the area and they do not have the facility to create a individual landfills. They all join together and then they request a government agency other thing one individual party comes in 
he follows all the technical other things are followed and then the only issue here is because they are located in different areas the waste has to be collected and brought to that particular site these things are happening now one is contemplated in uh, Kochi already some are in the operation in uh, Ankleshwar area in Gujarat as far as municipal solid waste is concerned also in Gujarat they are planning because small small municipal corporation they have to select a site which is all that then they combine together and then nobody owns it. There uh, what is happening is the collection of the waste municipal solid, uh, solid waste the collection of the waste the segregation the transportation then creating of the uh, into by whatever methodology you use creating into manure and then dumping the uh, balance portion into the landfill he is in operation but not many has been successful because uh, there are certain financial issues and most of the corporations are not in sound financial situation so they are not able to fulfill the requirement so that is a holding problem but the concept is very much in place both for hazardous as well as municipal solid waste in fact what we have done for jaipur uh, jaipur indore rampur which i have discussed the case studies they are all in that kind of a thing but it is a little combination they allowed us to create and they also give us if we want we can operate it for three years but there are certain issues see in any municipal corporation there are existing rag pickers if you transmit give it to an industry house to do all this job the existing rag pickers are thrown out of job so you have to absorb them and take it into your system and create it otherwise you know there is a lot of social problems which is happening right now in Pune PCMC municipal corporation so these things have to be addressed these are all small things you cannot displace a person who is working out of, and push him out of the job because you are taking over as a company so these things have to be addressed very delicate issues is there any landfill that is closely monitored for its performance No, I do not think there is uh, any scientific monitoring as far as, as the history goes there have been fortunately no major failures which are on record. So, everything goes on that. Uh, in fact, uh, some of the projects which has been created has got a warranty and guarantee period of 25 years for the product and installation that is the thing, but the initial few years is always the worrisome once it settle down and start functioning then there should not be any problem and the earliest landfill for the hazardous from our experience is the Hindustan Zinc Vizac which has almost crossed 12 years and closed and the capping also has done. So, but basically I do not think there should be only thing is because the design the manuals are there there cannot be any issues. The product selection you have to use the best product if you do that the only worrying aspect is the insulation if you do the insulation and before you put the uh, landfill into operation you have to make a thorough check so there is not defects in the layers which you have created if you ensure that there should not be any problem but uh, we are a long way from doing this uh, scientific monitoring we have some monitoring arrangement pollution control board but it is not that much because abroad as I said the instead of the thing there are a method called grid lay method where the cables are laid below the geo membrane at the time of creating the landfill and each one is fed to a computer other thing and throughout the service period of the landfill it is monitored in a computer center to see each cable and other thing gives in that pattern area if there is any leak or anything it is detected that is a very close monitoring those kind of things are not because it cost lot of money here people have not done have enough money to spend for the creation of landfill so they are not willing to do that instead of engineered landfill most of it is waste dumps just dumping in large open site is there any chance of converting it to land <coughs> there is only one way see you have already started and dump there are two methods we can do 
Either you have to remove, create a new landfill and remove all this material and dump it there. That is one way, which could be very costly and other thing. Or at the most you can do whatever pollution to have take place has already taken place, the line water, the leachate, ground water pollution. You can only thing is regate the slope, stabilize it, cap it. So, that further percolation that depends two things you have to take, how long the waste has been there, what is the current status of the waste, does it need further protection that you have to estimate and you can do a capping. That is the only thing you can do. There are two methods as I said, remove it to a site, create another landfill dispose could be difficult or the existing place will cap it and provide the drains and other thing. So, further pollution does not take place. There you can solve all the problem as I showed in the first slide, the odor, the bird venance, the leachate, all these things can be solved by that, that is the only way. Thank you sir.